I'm going to just do a walk around and make sure that there's nothing glaring. And I think I'll take you guys along for the ride. So let me show you the bag system. Let me hit pause on my playlist. This is the Fast Foot by Fab Form. I'll put the details in the description because I'm not going to remember them off the top of my head. But you can kind of see how the bag system works. It's laid out for different, it kind of all depends. Like you see the, the 36, 40, 44, you can see that over there. Some of that depends on the height of your footing, but if you kind of press out with your feet as you staple it on, it goes on really easily. This particular footing calls for three bars. We have to hook two of them. And then these are the steel, mate. We just lay those out one foot centers and then we can pick our spacing based on what the engineer says, except for the front, which he called out as 10 inch spacing. So those of course are laid out for 10 inch. Everything else is 12 or that back wall was 48 on center. Then the footing expands to two foot six. For just this side, and it's because the floor system goes front to back, he did the same thing over on the far end. So that section is two foot six, and then the rest is two foot by 12 inches deep. This section has four number four bars, and then 36 inch verts with 18 inch tails. And here's the steel mate, 10 inches on center. They install pretty, pretty fast. Now, as you can see, we've got a lake out there. When the excavator came out and left, kind of slept a little bit. Otherwise, this all drained around and out. So, hey, it's life. That's why we wear rubber boots. I know you, you would have thought I was Han Solo, but I don't have the Karelian stripe. Star Wars reference for you. Expanded footings. Now, you probably already have some questions. Big point load footing. So what I'm standing in is actually below the garage floor. We're gonna frame joists and then slab over the top. This whole basement will be all basement slab. So you might be wondering, how can we use the bags here, but we didn't here? Well, I made a mistake on that job and I left the interior strip footings down low because I thought, well, they're just gonna pour the slab anyway, so who cares? <clears throat> what I failed to take into account here, let me do this here. What I failed to take into account is that this is going to fill up with rock, with pea gravel. It gets a vapor barrier, and then it gets two inches of insulation out to the wall and turns the corner. So we really want these footings to be at the same height so that we can stop our insulation at the footings. And then when the slab is poured, it can pour down into the footings since those are all structural. I'll try to get B-roll when that actually is happening. So what I did is I just double formed these we were gonna raise them to, well, that's basically when we figured, here, let's do this. So the reason, I, I still thought that was gonna work. When we formed this, we got everything formed and ready for inspection, and then it was like, I don't think that's gonna work very well for the insulation and gravel. So I just came in and just added more forms on top. So I know it's kind of ugly, not kind of, it is ugly. So these are mono cleats down below. They nail onto the form, and then these are just spreader cleats. So there's not going to be much load in there. And then of course, dobies keep our bar three inches off the soil. So that's what it looks like. I think I'll finish buttoning this thing up and then I'll go and maybe take some drone pictures and then and we'll pour concrete. And for a change, it looks like it's pretty decent out. Finally, this has been such a bizarre spring here. We can see the weather coming from there. So we'll see it's blue sky, then all of a sudden it's just dark clouds and either we'll just, you know, endure the hail or we'll run to the van. Depends on whether we notice it in time. So, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. We use the Stabila LA-180 to lay out. You've seen this in previous videos. I'll put some B-roll here. So what we do is we set it up in this corner and we shoot a square line with the laser and a square line. Here's the nails that we tack. These actually represent the foundation walls, the outside corners. So what we can do once we pour concrete is we're gonna dry line and set all of our clips. Because the walls are already placed, then there's no layout after we pour concrete. We can just dry line or snap if it, if it stiffens up quick enough. Hey, by the way, look at how straight that bar is. 
yeah, those steel mates, highly worth it. That's the second job we've used them on. I bought those, yeah, getting drizzled on a little bit. So let me show you over here what I'm talking about. These are the exact same plan, but mirrored. So that's the garage section, that's the garage section. So on our forms, we had a nail and a nail, and then we can snap lines, like we did this the next day after we stripped, but we can do it the same day. And then here's the spreader cleats that are gonna hold our foundation walls. Again, we're two inches off the foundation wall with our rebar, exactly as the inspector wants it. And just a few hours later, we are ready to place concrete. Look at that weather, it is beautiful. I hope it stays that way. Okay, I'm gonna go through the process. We're gonna speed up some, uh oh. Yep, there's the clouds. This is what I was talking about. Y'all, <laughs> this spring, this spring. Quite schizophrenic this spring is, was, has been. Always will be remembered to be set. Yep, so there it is. The hoses run out from the line pump. That's my brother-in-law just standing there like, seriously, we have to do this again in the rain? Well, you'll see. The sun does come back out. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, when it rains, we pour, right? That's, uh, I should get t-shirts made. Would you guys buy t-shirts if I got them made? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? There's no sense complaining about it or crying about it. That pond in the front, well, it is what it is. It's not what it isn't. Let's just get down to this concrete placement. <laughs> Look at poor Greggy. He's just like, seriously? By the way, I don't think I show it. Maybe I do. Yeah, this drone footage, you can see the pavement starting to get wet. I'm just letting the Mavic fly. Okay, so let's just get down to the concrete placement. That is the mixer truck backed up to the pump truck. That's the hopper that it's starting to pour concrete into. The operator always of the pump, the operator always double checks the mix, make sure he likes it. It's a six sack, 60, 40 mix with fly ash and pea gravel. Basically, it's a smaller aggregate and that's what it allows, that's what it allow. that's what allows it, easy for me to say, that's what allows it to flow through the hose because the hose is a little smaller than a boom pump. Okay, now it's time to just get to placing concrete. I know you've seen this in previous videos, so I'm gonna cut, yeah, I mean, look at it. <laughs> I, had to, I had to land them the Mavic. It was like, nope, that's what I just took off to do. I am the Mavic, but let the GoPro be out there in the rain. Okay, so let's get into the concrete placement. I'm not gonna belabor this point. You've seen this in previous videos. If you haven't seen it, then we'll go into it just a little bit. Like I mentioned, that is a line pump. The advantage to us is that the company provides somebody to operate it, depending on the company. So in a sense, that gives us one extra person. This guy was a beast. He was so strong. He was whipping that hose around like nothing. We just couldn't believe it. I should try to find some B-roll of him just flipping that hose. Where we like to start is at the step downs. You pour your mud a little stiffer there because it's more likely to hold. But the way that we've been building these, these little step downs like this, they don't even creak. So I'm just kind of stepping on the bar because I want to keep it spaced where it is. And he's just pumping. Whenever we start placing concrete, it's a slow, like everybody gets to stand around and just chat while we wait. Once it fills up, then he's going to start to pump down the length and we'll go fill up that other step down. Anybody else think of like soft serve ice cream from Dairy Queen? You know, soft ice cream coming out and filling up a cone. Maybe it's just me. So you can see that is not super loose mud. And by loose, we mean like wet. You can tell that it's not just like flowing down the bags, but it's holding itself. Now, what we like to do, and this was a trick that another pump operator taught us some years ago, is that if you use your concrete rake, then you don't have to bend over to rot off the top of the concrete. Also, because the 2x4 is there to hold the verts, rotting it off doesn't really work any, very well anyway. So you put a person on the inside, a person on the outside, give them each rakes. Always have a couple mag floats running. So my brother there, he's going to go ahead and start floating the top of the concrete, as Kyle, in this case, is um, flattening the top. Then Greg has the cordless concrete vibrator. Yeah, I mean, look at that. <laughs> Just came in. Oh man, these little GoPros though, they are champs. They are champs. I think it'll become a little bit more clear here in just a minute. You know, to be honest, this spring, I think I came the closest to a nervous breakdown that I ever have. 
I'm not I'm not hyperbolizing either. It was it was really stressful just the way everything seems to have been working out. Now looking at it in hindsight, it's like, hey, look at that. You know, look how tough we are. <laughs> we did all this stuff. Oh man. Ah, oh, we made it through it. One foot in front of the other, one day at a time. Each day has enough of its own troubles. Don't think too far out. That, that's what we're slowly learning. I don't know if you all have been dealing with supply chain issues, labor shortages, scheduling issues, weather, like just everything. If it can go wrong, it's going wrong. But we're just learning very begrudgingly not to stress about it. Just, just take one day at a time, really. Okay, so let's get back to the, the um, kind of the order of things. Operator is placing the concrete. He's eyeballing it to the top. Sometimes we have to add a little, sometimes we have to take a little out, but he gets it real close. Guy on the inside, guy on the outside. You can see that we're just using the concrete rakes to just flatten the top, kind of push it around into the bag system. And then my brother is the one that's gonna float the top with his mag float. And Greg's got the concrete vibrator. That's the basic process. So we just follow the pump operator all the way around. You can see that when the footings get bigger, there's actually less work for us to do because you're waiting on it to fill up, right? So that's not a bad thing, by the way. We like to have one more person than we think we need. And then if things go well, a lot of times he can take off or we just share the load and nobody has to get overtired. Everything about this process is exhausting. Setting up footings, placing concrete, tearing them down, setting up foundation walls. It's way harder on the body than framing. I'll, I'll digress here for just a moment. These two footings and this work will take me about six months to fully heal from. My lower back doesn't, I don't have no structural back problems, but I'll just be sore for, for probably up to six months. Kind of depends on what we get back to. Now that it's summertime, as I'm editing these, I can get out and hike and the warm weather helps, but foundation work is just hard. And maybe it's even a little harder when it rains. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, as you can see too, you can tell our stakes are about every four feet apart. We have spreader cleats on top and then we have one by fours on top and that just elevates the two by fours enough for the mag float to get underneath it. Footings do not need to be super pretty. They just need to be flat so that we can stack our wall panels. It's all gonna get covered by either concrete, foam, vapor barrier or dirt. I don't see any value in making the tops polished. That's just me. Other people might do it differently. In my opinion, save your body where you can, save the labor hours where you can. Everything's expensive as it is. What's the point of polishing it so it looks like the floor of a big box store? But anyway. Okay, so you can tell schizophrenic, I think was the right word. The weather just rain and then the sun comes out. What the operator likes to do, the pump operator, is he tries to minimize moving his hose. So he's just gonna pump wherever his hose is close to. So now we're doing the interior strip footings. You can see the hose really flopping. Depending on the company that you use, some of them do that. Um, and it's kind of annoying. You can see it kind of moving the, the verts there. Well, our form stayed right where we wanted them to. That wasn't an issue. It's just, well, it looks dumb. Yeah, you can do both sides on the back, Brian. And then I'll, I'll stay up there with... Okay, so we're gonna do all the boxes. Or the... Uh, Interiors. I think he's kind of just winding his way. Okay. I'm not really needed over there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pop these off as we go, Brian, just if you see them. I think he's having trouble with it. Yep. I think we got it ditch miles. He just said, basically, good luck trying to get Cal Portland through your mud. Yeah. What, are they just doing commercial work? They're just so busy. Cool. Well, try Bayshore. Nice. 
I think so. Okay, yeah. The middle is like nothing has to really be done anyway. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna dig this down because we'll probably come back to it. What we were talking about there is the fact that we continue to have trouble with the concrete from this particular batch plant. It will meet all of its um, design requirements, but it just doesn't pump. I've talked to three pump companies that have been struggling with it, as well as some other subs, and we're just annoyed. Basically what happens is, is the sand is hot, it absorbs the water, and even though it's still gonna be strong concrete, it doesn't like to flow through that hose very well. And so it's just hard to work. So what the pump guy had to keep doing was backing it up and going forward. So it just took longer. It added a layer of stress that we didn't need. But as you can see, we're just gonna keep rolling. Um, the other thing I was talking about a little bit earlier was those interior strip footings. They don't need to be pretty. So we're just gonna pour right to the top and then use the concrete rakes and flatten them off. But that's going to get, uh, that's going to get a basement slab over the top of it so it doesn't need to be super pretty. So again, save the energy. These days get hard enough as it is. Okay, so you saw it from the drone. Now I'm gonna show you from the hill, and then I'm gonna let it play out in real time from that camera right there in the foreground, bottom left. Yeah, I'm super embarrassed by this, but I also recognize that things like this happen, and so I'm showing it. Maybe it's dumb, because I get a lot of hate. When I posted like the little one minute, you know, vertical reel version of this on Instagram, and here on YouTube, boy, did I get a lot of hate. But I think it's instructive. Like I said, it's been stressful, so we just missed it. I, earlier in the video, I even talked about doing a once around. I thought I had everything dialed in. I didn't. You can see that we have stakes about every five or six feet. Some people think that's the problem. It's not. It's not. The problem, as you'll see, is that I popped a spreader cleat. That also wasn't the problem. Two of those one by fours were not tacked to the forms. Had either of those situations been different, this would not have happened. You saw that we poured the one, maybe I'll put it up here. We poured the other one in the rain, nothing popped. In fact, nothing ever pops for us like this. So this is, that's the reason why I'm posting this, is yeah, it's embarrassing. We're awesome framers. <laughs> We're not awesome concrete guys. We make lots of mistakes. I don't care who you are, mistakes happen. I've had, I have some good friends that work commercial and boy, some of those colossal failures, good Lord. I mean, there's some real stories there. But here you just watch. We're kind of just letting the guy do his job. I'm coming through with the rake. You would think that pressure would do something. Nothing creaked. So just sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. I'm letting it hang out there. Also, at this point, I really don't care. I don't care what anyone thinks. Yeah, we blew it. I blew it. This one's 100% on me. Right there. See what I'm doing? Don't do it to me, don't. Just don't do it. Here it comes. 
Yep, we heard something. Now I'd like to point out something too, is like instantly, this wasn't a big deal. And it was like, okay, we can fix it. Oh, I see, there's some nails that got missed. But now watch, we save it. We save it, that's what makes this so sad to me. In hindsight, ah, and I, I just blame myself 100%. At the end of the day, it wasn't a big deal. But just dumb, just dumb. The pump guy knows, so he's heading off. He's just gonna start filling. <laughs> he's gonna start filling the other footing. He's like, I know, I know when these guys. Yeah, so he's just gonna keep going. I don't blame him either. He's wet. He's getting tired. So now with enough pressure, right? We're strong. We're framers. We're gonna get it. In fact, we do get it. Watch. Got it. Look at that. Now, all I needed to do was walk away. Walk away, stupid. I'm speaking to myself. My, uh, my past self. I would really like to invent a time machine. The first thing I would do with that time machine is go back and tell myself, leave that spreader cleat in place. Then I would go farther back in time and I would tell the younger version of myself, hey man, I don't think this is what you want to do for a job. <laughs> And then I would go back even farther and, you know, I'd buy Amazon stock early on when I should have. My uh, Econ 101 teacher in 1998 told me to buy Amazon stock. Do you think I did? I was a single guy with discretionary income. I could have. Yeah, see, because I was pushing on it, it popped again and we thought, well, we can save it. I'm just going to shut up. You guys can watch this. When you see it from the other camera angle too, you're going to see this is just 100% my fault. My fault, I own it. Thought, oh, maybe if I get another spreader cleat. Run, Forrest, grab some spreader cleats. Kyle's just like, I, I got it, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I'm letting it hang out there. This is what it's really like on our job sites. Are you sure you want to come out and frame with us? Just leave it alone, Timmy. Just walk away. Walk away. True. It just raises your own blood pressure. Yeah. Here it is from a different angle. It has better audio. Now you can see, I, I really hope, I'm posting this because I think, why am I posting this, honestly? <laughs> ah, that's, that's the crazy laugh. Like what? The reason I'm posting this is one, I, I try to be transparent. You know, we have triumphs we'll once or twice a year. More often than not, we have stupid things like this happen, and there, I'm just letting it hang out there. I think it's instructive. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't post. I'm posting it though. I hope that it's educational, or if it's not educational, at least maybe it's entertaining. I don't know. I don't know. Enjoy.
let this chill before I tamp it down very easily. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little low, but I, I don't think... I don't, yeah. Whoa. I, I thought I was here in a creek. I did too. It leaned my way. Okay. And it just dropped. Yep. Yeah, they all, the screws popped. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, we were there too. So what happened? It just leaned my way. Okay, well. Okay. Oh, you know what it was? We'll just chill. The yeah. screws. This guy wasn't wasn't nailed, no, and I so popped the cleat. the cleat. Well, let's see if we can put it back on. Uh, hey, look at that. Think it, yeah. It was... Yeah, it's because this cleat didn't have a nail. Okay. So if you I hold that, I don't know if we'll get it. It's your side that's got to come. Yeah. You want to just leave it? Well, at this point, I mean, I think we can get it. Get it. If Here, we can bend that, let me just straighten this back out. If you, um, Greggy, with one of these rakes, help me just pull. Yeah, both of these didn't have nails. Huh. I got a rake here. I think you can. You can it, probably you, pull from you that can just side. Pull, yeah. Okay. Oh, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. I'm gonna go in the water, but we're gonna get it. Are you there? Nope. Not quite. Nope. Nope. There. Okay. Nice. Hey, it's right back up to level. Good job, guys. That's, yeah, I was like, what the what? <laughs> I was like, I wasn't traveling that hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Soft touch, Greg. <laughs> Soft touch. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave spreader cleats just in case. Yep. It was like literally the only two that yeah. probably didn't get a nail. Oh, dog on it. Okay, can we try this guy too? That nail just pulled. Okay. Hey, Greggy. Yo. I think it's the screw. Oh, okay, it's the screws. Man, the ice. Okay. Okay. So can we get gone. one? Can oh. we get one more? Um, this whole thing. Hold on one sec. Let's do it in stages, so I have one oh, here. Yeah. Okay. And so then we'll probably have to pop that guy. Yep. I don't think I'm we're gonna, gonna get it. Come on, no, we're not. I wonder. Let's just sit. Do we have? A, I don't think we're gonna a get it. Bar? We do, but I think at this point it'd be better to go down there. Let's just let it set. Yeah. And then maybe. I think he. I think we should let it sit. Let it set up. He leaves us a pile right here, and then we just scoop it in bit by bit. Do you want to try? Oh, I'm, that's. I'm worried the whole thing's just gonna go zip open. Yeah. If we if we mess with it. I think you're right. Yep, yeah, not, yep, no more, no more touching, yep. Okay, well, we're professionals. Well, we have more now. I mean, at least this side never changed, so that side just got bigger. Hey, so I'm gonna talk about here? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Sorry. Like Sorry. Water will run down. Yeah. No, that that's perfect.
I'll go a little later. Okay. I wonder if I can't pour it. Um, yeah, if you want to slough it in, I'm... I'm no, I yeah. can't. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. So how did we fix it? We didn't. I'm just going to say it right now. We didn't. It's going to get buried, and there's a decision that you make that it's going to be a way bigger deal to try and make it look pretty. So now the trick is to make it functional. So what we do is we let it set for 25 minutes. We finish the rest of the footing. The pump guy left us a nice pile of concrete. Now what we're going to do is buy half five gallon bucket at a time. I'm just scooping it, handing it, and we're going to flatten the top, mag float the top, put a little sweat into it. All we need is for this to support the wall panels nice and flat when we pour stem walls. Is this a structural problem? No, because now we have more concrete than we need. So that, that's our justification. You don't need to make it look super pretty. It's all going to be buried. And I think maybe that's the lesson. I'm not trying to be a hack. I'm super embarrassed by this. I think it's ugly. And it doesn't matter structurally. So sometimes you just got to check your personal pride and go, things happen. It's my fault. But the, the job goes on, right? And like I mentioned earlier, this spring has just been rough. It's not just been rough for us. It's been rough for you too. One foot in front of the other, it works. I think that's it. I'm going to grab all this, and then I'll grab the two cameras. Yeah, we could throw it in the water and just... Just a little bit of concrete. Yeah, that's it, though. <laughs> I know. These are new. Yeah. Yeah. That one was perfect. So if I if I wouldn't have popped the cleat, and we missed a couple stakes, I missed a couple stakes. So. Yeah. Yep. It's not what it isn't. Okay, so that didn't go well. Could have gone a lot worse, a whole lot worse. But basically. We've been dealing with hot mud from the batch plant. And by we, I mean everybody in the area. And then we have one by fours across the top of the um, footings because that's what we put our two by four and then we put our verts to that. So wherever I had a spreader cleat next to that, I was like, well, I'll just take them off now instead of tomorrow after the concrete's on, you know, covered it. The one I popped, the two one by fours next to it were not nailed. So technically it's the person's fault who, yikes who didn't nail those. But if I would have just left it and not been in a hurry, it wouldn't have mattered. So we're done. We're done. Nothing else to say. But hey, it could have been a whole lot worse. Like, you know, can't find the off button worse. <laughs>